All right, what's up, YouTube? Um, Sergeant King or Jesse King back at you again. And in this video, I wanna talk about specifically Mech Aptitude contracts. So let's say um, you're already booked to a Mech Aptitude contract or your recruiter, recruiter suggesting that you should uh, go in on a Mech Aptitude contract. Um, this is one of the most common contracts we have in recruiting. Um, I know as far as at my level, I see uh, a ton of them on our jobs list every month and it's a good opportunity. Um, if you were warning about how the jobs are booked, um, so, oh, let me just reiterate. So this is where you're guaranteed a job in the mechanical category. <laughs> it's where you're guaranteed a job in the mechanical category, yet you are listing the jobs in basic training and getting selected for the job in basic training. So if you want to know more about uh, how the jobs are selected in basic training and the opportunities for each job, go back and watch my video. It's called Air Force Open Contracts or Air Force Aptitude Contracts. And I go into depth, go into detail on how they're actually booked and stuff and what your kind of what your odd, odds are and how you want to go about it. <clears throat> but for this video, once again, I just want to talk about mechanical aptitude contracts and I want to give you my hint and um, my tips for it. So um, if you're going for a mechanical aptitude contract, your recruiter should print out your um, qualification list. So every job you qualify for that falls, um, and every job you qualify for period, and then every job that has an M beside it falls into the mechanical category and you should be able to list all of those jobs in basic training. <clears throat> But the hint I want to give you, uh, so that you're prepared when you go to basic training, you list your jobs. The hint I want to give you is about two jobs in particular. <clears throat> These two jobs in particular are um, fuels and ammo, <clears throat> both for the Air Force. And what I want, the reason I'm going to give you hints or tips on them is because these jobs are huge career fields. They require a lot of manning and there's a lot of people there all, at all times. <clears throat> so if you are interested in those jobs, you have high odds of, list, of getting them while you're in basic training. If you're not interested in those jobs, I suggest you make sure you are prepared to not list them and have other uh, opportunities and things you're, you're, uh, <clears throat> you're wanting to do. Um, as you know, if you watched some of my previous videos, I am a pre I'm previously a fuels troop, and I promise I'll give you guys a follow-up video more about fuels in the Air Force and the opportunities it has. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I just wanted to make sure that you guys understand that those two are very common because they're such large career fields. So that's something that you definitely want to do your research on before going to basic training and listing the jobs that you're interested in. Because if you list fuels or ammo, there's a very good opportunity that you're going to get one of those jobs. So once again, before leaving for basic training, if you're on an aptitude mechanical contract, you need to do research into fuels or ammo and make sure you, you're interested in doing something like that because you have good opportunity to get those two jobs. <clears throat> Sorry, this is kind of a short video, but I've already talked about aptitude contracts in the past and how they categorize and how they're kind of booked. And um, I just wanted to give my hints and tips on um, uh, or my a little extra help I can give you guys on mechanical contracts. And if you have any questions, obviously put them in the comments. Please like, subscribe, follow, and thank you for your time. See you, YouTube.